Hey, we're finally back in the hardcore world. I have been a pretty busy guy between episodes, doing a lot of little stuff around the base here and there. So I figure we just do a little bit of like rapid fire updates of everything that I've been working on, and then we'll get to our main stuff for today. I've added some of the weeping nether vines to the bottom of this mushroom. It was always part of the original build, but of course when I built it, we were not able to go to the nether just yet, so uh, didn't have access to any of them, but now they are there and they're looking very nice. And I suppose while we're here, we'll talk about about the uh, unfortunate reality of our villager situation. I got a few comments from you guys, which I really, really appreciate, and I did some testing in a creative test world, and the unfortunate reality with villagers is that they kind of don't work when it's always nighttime. First of all, they don't breed, which is uh, incredibly annoying, but I kind of would have been okay with that if I had like a consistent source of villagers from villages, which I kind of do. You know, I would have been able to make do with like the bare essentials, but unfortunately on top of that, they do not restock their trades either. So we would have been able to get like a few books per villager if I had gotten the trade just right on the first try. <sighs> yeah, it, it wouldn't have been that great. So um, gonna figure out what I wanna do with these guys down in the basement. You guys let me know what you think would be the most efficient use of the villagers we have underground. Let me know down in the comments because I'm really not sure. I suppose we will just have to make do. Anyways, over in our underground passage area, I have been breeding up a a whole lot of sheep. In hindsight, I probably should have added a little bit more grass to the bottom here because these guys are not regrowing their wool at all. Kind of unfortunate. Over on our lump area, as you saw in the time lapse, I was grinding up a whole bunch of mushroom block resources, but we'll get to that in a minute. More importantly, down in our, ooh, weird visual glitch right there, down in our mining area, uh, I found something very, very cool and I put it to very good use. You guys might be able to hear it, but over over in this direction, I actually put together a mob grinder. Yeah, great to have a source of EXP finally. If I just go ahead and poke myself in here, you'll see that it is a zombie- Oh, I, I lost a deep slate. Uh, hmm, that's weird. Why is that block not covered with water? Uh, but yeah, this is a zombie spawner. I've got the entire thing kitted out. Just gonna steal a deep slate from here, I guess. Yeah, I've got the entire thing kitted out. It's been a very functional EXP farm, thankfully, and I have been using it to get quite a bit of levels, as you can see, 26 levels to my name. And last but definitely not least, as I have been alluding to, and as I'm sure you saw in the title of today's video, I have been hard at work grinding up resources. I'm talking mushroom stems, white wool, calcite and diorite, a whole bunch of red concrete powder, and a whole bunch of the red mushroom blocks. I'm sure you guys know what that's going to be used for. We are going to be working on a very, very large big shroom later in today's video, but I still need to do a little bit more prep work before we can get to that. I know, I know I'm doing the annoying YouTuber thing where they show off the fun, cool project and then they don't do it until later in the video. Trust me, it's because I really, really have some stuff that I have to get out of the way first. And I suppose now's a good time to kind of just go over our agenda for today. Uh, first of all, we found a nether fortress off in the distance in the end of the last video. If you didn't see that one, I recommend going and checking that one out. We checked out the nether for the first time. So we're gonna go do that. And I found actually a couple other really, really dope things in the nether that we will be getting to shortly. And on top of that, the resources that I have over there are not nearly enough enough for this massive, massive mushroom, which will become our main storage system that we're going to be building later in the video. So I definitely need to do a lot more farming of bone meal, a lot more farming of mushroom blocks, a lot more farming of red dye. Oh, and in case this video is coming out a couple days late than my usual Sunday time slot for these hardcore videos, uh, I apologize for that. I was going to get a head start on this video over the last weekend, but unfortunately I got pretty sick. I'm feeling a lot better now, which is why I'm recording, but I had a bit of a stomach flu for a few days, so I was really not able to do much of anything, and uh, that kind of really messed up my schedule with regards to video uploading and whatnot. But I appreciate the patience you guys have with me and my video schedule. Usually it's pretty regular, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. Anyways, we have a nether fortress to go explore, as I've been alluding to, so why don't we go get prepped for that? 
Alrighty, quick bit of suiting up later. I believe we are all good to go. I put together a very basic little enchanted bow here just with power two. Got some blocks, got some arrows, got of course our piglin protection gold helmet, and we should be all good to go into the nether, like so. Done a little bit of patching up the terrain around here. As I'm sure you guys remember from the previous episode, our nether spawn has been kind of crappy to be honest. We're kind of just up on this cliff with nothing really around, a whole lot of nether waste and stuff, no interesting biomes nearby. But we did have this bastion that we raided last time. And if you remember, while we were over here, we saw something pretty neat. Uh-huh, there we go. Off in this direction, there is a nether fortress. Oh yeah, don't forget guys, no shields. Nuh-uh, none of that allowed. Conveniently, there is a better way of getting over there than just uh, bridging over all of that lava. You see, off camera, when I was doing a little bit of nether exploring, I was checking out a warped forest which is over in that direction. Then you can see the nether fortress, which I'm assuming is the same one we were able to see from the bastion, is just right here. All right, first nether fortress raid in hardcore survival Minecraft. Wish me luck, guys. Much like with our Bastion raid, I am pretty nervous. Don't know how this is gonna go. Probably gonna get set on fire a lot. And I, uh, now that I think about it, I didn't bring very much food. <laughs> <sighs> We'll see what happens. But there's only one way to find out, and that is to continue onwards. Oh boy, every time I see a blaze, it's just like, please stop. Like, ugh. I just, getting hit is going to be so annoying because I have to take the hit pretty much every time they fire. Dodging blazes is difficult. Get that all torched up real quick. Okay, actually not doing too bad on the health front right now. Maybe we stick around for a little bit and farm a few more blazes, just so we can get those blaze rod numbers up a little bit, you know? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Tw wow, 20 blaze rods already. Okay, <laughs> we should be pretty much good in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the looting three is very powerful, Jesus. 27 blaze rods, that is good enough for me. Let us skedaddle out of here. We need nether warts, we need to loot all the chests we can find, we need to not die to wither skeletons, ideally. You, I'm looking at you, buddy. I got my eye on you. You too, right there. I see you around the corner. Having looting and knockback on my sword is probably one of the best things for, wither, for dealing with the wither skeletons, because, you know, we want the skulls, we want to uh, push them away from us so they don't wither us to death, like I'm getting withered right now. Loki, I'm kind of moving right now. I, I, you know, I got all, all nervous and stuff for this nether fight, but it's going pretty well. My movement is feeling good. I'm hitting my hits. I'm hitting my shots. I really can't complain too much. This spawner is still spawning, which is quite annoying, but I think that's mainly just due to like the light level changes. You really got to torch up these things nowadays if you want them to actually not spawn. So I'm just going to let it be for now. Wow, there is literally nothing here. <laughs> very cool. Thanks, bro. Very, very interesting interesting and detailed structure generation you got there, Mojang. <laughs> hey, would you look at that? Wow, okay, this basalt delta is kind of insane. I love the particle effects in this biome. I know I've said that several times already. The ash particles are so sick. The terrain generation is so sick. If it just wasn't a huge pain to get around, but the basalt delta would really be one of my favorite biomes, probably in the entire game. Glowstone has been acquired. Oh, hmm. Wow, more, that, that, is, that is absolutely terrifying. Jesus. I'm blocking that off ASAP. How did I not notice that on my way in? Without nether warts, <sighs> kind of stuck here. And I have not been able to find any thus far. Aha, wow, <laughs> speak of the devil, there we go. Just what I was looking for. Very poggers, very poggers indeed. Haven't seen a single loot chest this entire time. Oh, <laughs> oh there we are. <laughs> Never mind. More nether warts. I'll take the flint. I just, I'll just take everything. Why not? Oh my god. Wow, that's a good find. Six diamonds from a loot chest. What are the odds of that? Actually quite insane and poggers as well today. Hi, piglin. There you, actually, you know what? I got three gold bars. Let me see what you got here. What you got for me, buddy? What you got? 
Okay, crying obsidian didn't have any of that, so I, I guess I'll take it. Hey, you, you left a gold. Regular obsidian, only one, but still that's quite poggers. It's quite poggers and beast. And uh, spectral arrows, okay, sure, I'll take them, I guess. All right, as much as I would love to stay and chat and possibly farm wither skulls, Ah, that's a lie. I do not want to farm any Wither Skulls at all. That is absolutely atrocious grind. I think it is about time to head back. We've had an incredibly successful Nether Fortress run thus far. I am going in the complete wrong direction, but wow, the skybox is cool in the Warped Forest. I forgot how cool this is. You go away. So why don't we head back and continue on with some other projects? I just need to um find the exit now. What is that? <laughs> why are the piglins loading with their armor like that? That's definitely a glitch. I'm not sure if that's a Minecraft thing or if that's a, uh, a fabric thing, but <laughs> what's good with that? <laughs> why can I see your like blazing golden helmet shining through the fog? <laughs> it's kind of funny. We have safely returned from the nether once again. Thank God, because <laughs> it really stresses me out every time, I swear. And more importantly, we got some good stuff. We got nether warts. Finally, we can brew things. We got a bunch more quartz. We got six more diamonds. And I, uh, I think it's about time we get to some building, don't you think? So let me get this stuff put away. And then I want to do a little bit of a small building project on camera with you guys because I haven't done one of those in a while and I think it could be really, really nice. Now, if only this rain would get out of my face. In the last episode, we talked briefly about this cute little grove right behind me. And now that we've acquired nether warts and blaze rods, I'm in the mood to do some brewing, which means we could turn this area into a cool little brewing hut. I'm gonna be keeping things pretty much in the same style of our starter base behind me, which means our brewing hut is gonna be in the form of a smaller log right about here. Oh, by the way, one thing I definitely don't wanna forget about. In the process of getting some more mangrove wood, I picked up this little guy right Right here. Isn't he adorable? I don't know what to name this guy. <laughs> wow, look at that stupid jump. <laughs> so if you've got any suggestions for what to name this lovely little dude, let me know down in the comments below because I really do not have any ideas. Anyways, getting on over to our build here, I thought it would be interesting to kind of shove the tree stump kind of in this direction a little bit. So we're going to be taking out a little bit of this dirt here. By doing this, not only will we have a little bit more space inside this mound, which will introduce like a subterranean element to our build, which will be pretty nice, but we'll have a little bit more space on the outer edges of the grove here for like growing mushrooms and plants and stuff and just more foliage, kind of like a little herb garden outside of our potion hut. So like with our main starter base, I'm just going to be starting things off by laying down the basic shape of the tree stump. Remember, you know, it's going to be roughly circular, but it really doesn't have to be anything too symmetrical. Not only is it an organic build, but it's a really old and decomposing one at that. So there really isn't any need for any kind of major symmetry. As long as the vibes are right, then it is all good, my dude. So something like this is probably pretty good. I want to have the entrance Hmm, actually, I'm not sure if I want to have the entrance in the corner here or off to the side. I think that if we had the entrance off in this area, that could actually be pretty cool. So I might bring this out by one more and then have a two wide entrance. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, so bear with me. If you're ever interested in like my thought process behind my builds and that kind of stuff, this might be very interesting for you. So I hope you get something nice out of it. I'm also definitely going to add some sections that are kind of poking out a little bit, maybe one right there and you know, something along the lines of that maybe as well. And then maybe one more over here. This is just because, you know, like on real life trees, you have these rooty sections that stick out from the main trunk and I want to make sure we capture that as well. We don't want our tree just to be a cylinder. So you can kind of see the general shape of the roots we're trying to make, you know, just nice and gentle and organically sloping down into the ground. Now all that's left to do is to build up the rest of the tree stump. Something like that. You can see how I was kind of, ooh, I gotta fix that. That's no good. <laughs> you guys didn't see that. I've been making these like gentle slopes up because of course the trunk of the tree generally gets narrower and narrower uh, the further up you go. I put in the occasional slab and stuff just to make sure it doesn't look like concentric rings of logs going up. Once again, you want to have as little uniformity as possible. Got these more slopey sections where the tree stump juts out more. Then I've got the more vertical sections where 
where there isn't as much, you know, rootage going on here. I've even got our little entrance. Then towards the top of the tree stump, I'm making it almost kind of jagged, you know, with these kind of pointy bits pointing upward much higher than the lower sections down here, right? Like we've got this really interesting height elevation going on here with really high points like right up here and really low points like all the way down here. Just to make sure once again that it's looking less uniform because when trees fall down in real life, the stumps that they leave behind are often very jagged and disorderly just like this. Before we continue with the detail work, it's also worth noting that you can add in slabbage on the inside here just to, you know, smooth out the inside of the log just as much as you would the outside. And speaking of slabbing and staring things, <laughs> staring things, Hello there. I've also added a little bit of detail to the back section of our log area here. Just, you know, a little bit of slabs and stairs on the rock to make it look extra, you know, eroded and stuff. It almost even gives the impression that you could be storing things back here, which we might actually do when it gets to the real detail phase of things. But yeah, so our tree stump is looking pretty nice, but also it's a lot of the same texture. And if you know anything about me, especially me in my hardcore world, I love adding texture to everything. If you remember over in my starter base, <laughs> that frog jumping always freaks me out, man. If you remember over in our starter base, we've gotten moss in the sections in between these big rooty areas. And then we've got a little bit of a gradient from the moss to mangrove wood to strip dark oak wood and finally back to our regular dark oak wood. We're working on a much smaller scale, but I did bring along some strip dark oak and some mangrove wood. And of course we can make more strip dark oak pretty easily. So looking at this section, you know, I see the center two areas right here very much look like the center of the build. So why don't we just throw in a little bit of moss there, you know, gonna turn this into the, uh, the wood variant, the six-sided wood. And of course, we have to make sure it goes sideways to line up with the texture properly. That's not lining up. That's not lining up either. Um, that's definitely... Okay, maybe I just... Nope. Hmm. All right, well, that's just going to have to be like that, unfortunately. We're going to strip that, strip that, and maybe strip that as well. Coming on over here, I might even strip these two. Those three, actually, I can count, I swear. And what if we try putting a mangrove in there? Yeah, that, that looks pretty nice. We'll leave that there. Yeah, so you can see we've got that like two block center area and all the blocks that are adjacent to it, even the slabs, are a little bit off color. And that's exactly what I was going for here. The inside has got quite a bit more texture now. Next thing I want to tackle is making this pathway stop a little bit shorter. So maybe we'll get rid of these four blocks right here and just put in some regular old dirt. And then I want to decorate this exterior here with, like I was saying before, a cute little mushroom and herb garden of some kind. I think it'll look really, really lovely. Let's see what I can come up with. A little bit of detail work later, and here we are. I know, it's very, very cluttered. But let's start from the beginning. The first thing I did is I laid down a smaller version of the same pathway style that we've been using thus far, and then I just threw in a whole lot of stuff, really. Got nether warts to signify that, of course, we're brewing potions here. Plenty of other uh, nether stuff like the soul sand, the crimson fungus, and the warped fungus. Of course, I didn't want to forget about this kind of upper shelf here going around here like a big arm and of course when we walk in here we're greeted by kind of like a shower of uh, pollen from the spore blossom and now with our exterior looking really really lovely I gotta say I am very happy with how this has been turning out so far the only thing that's left to do is to tackle the interior. Now I've been doing a whole lot of decoration with you guys and I don't want to make this episode drag on for too too long so I think I'm going to do one big cut here, do a little bit of a time skip and I will come back to you guys when our interior is fully furnished and we will discuss. It's the next day in real life and I've got a finished brewing hut to show you guys. As we walk down the pathway here and around the bed towards the grove, you can see I've done a little bit of customization here on the trees, getting a little bit of the propagule action going on and some glow lichen. And when we step through here, Check this out. Gonna switch over to a little bit of a cinematic replay mod view here for you guys, but check it out. This is so cool. All the different colors and shapes and details coming together in a really beautiful picturesque scene. We can make our way down this pathway, stepping on through all this fungus and into the interior of the brewing hut where we are greeted by this shot. 
Yeah, <laughs> things came together really, really well, and I am very proud. Starting from the entrance, on the right here, you can see we've got a little water pit with uh, some smoke coming out of it, because why not? We got our brewing stands making their awkward potions. Got a whole lot of miscellaneous foliage and shelves here. Got a little bit of our storage here with some water bottles in both chests and, of course, potion ingredients. Turning our attention to the left, you can see we've got our little brewing area, where I have decorated this little bit of exposed rock with the moss and some more plants and some hanging roots and whatnot and we got two campfires underneath the cauldron so we got some smoke coming out and smoke being caught underneath and of course we've got storage here on our left for finished potions uh, I haven't actually made any yet but that's fine and to tie it all together we've got this really lovely mud and a mushroom and I guess a little bit of coarse dirt as well floor as a kind of like earthy patchwork floor I think it looks really really great always nice to do a little bit of interior design so one important thing I should mention here, uh, really over the course of this, uh, over the course of this entire episode, I have been on the resource grind. As you guys know, I mentioned briefly in the beginning of the video, we're going to be building a mega mushroom right about here. I've cleared out a little bit of an area. And the reason we are building this mega shroom is, well, I need storage really, really bad. If we take a look at our storage area, what we put together in the second episode or first episode or whatever, I don't remember, things are getting really full. Totally, pretty much full on cobble, definitely very full on wood, is definitely not enough, especially if we want to start tackling large building projects in the future. So it's about time we made a legit big boy storage system that will last us quite a while into the future. Imagine for a moment, if you will, a giant freakishly large mushroom towering over basically our entire starter base. I know I said I was going to be finishing up this starter area in the last episode, but here we are making more additions because I just couldn't resist making another mushroom. But of course, in order to put this thing together, we are going to need piles and piles of resources. And check this out. A whole barrel full of red mushroom blocks a little bit of extra going on here for the actual red mushroom cap we're using red concrete powder and it has been a crazy grind to try and get all of this put together i think i have enough red concrete powder but i'm not entirely sure yet what i definitely don't have enough of is mushroom stems we're gonna need so much more and oh my god mushroom stems are a pain in the butt to farm as you can see i was already farming up so many red mushrooms but anyways enough blabbering on about prep and resource grinds and whatever. You guys want to see the build. I want to get to the build. Let's get into our time lapse. Big shroom, very big shroom. Oh man, what a grind this was to put together. <laughs> Seriously, it's hard to attempt these like really large, dare I say, mega projects when you're this early in a Minecraft world. I'm sure you guys are very used to seeing YouTubers like myself taking on these massive mega projects episode after episode, but here's the thing about these guys compared to me. I don't have villagers, I don't have elytra, I don't have shulker boxes, I don't have a particularly good source of EXP or bone meal, I'm doing everything manually. And because of that, things take a long time, but the shroom is finally done and look at it! It looks so cool. Admittedly, the top and the sides are just totally covered in torches because I definitely made a massive mob farm. So that was a little bit annoying, but we've got that all taken care of now. And man, what an amazing mushroom this is. As you know, I'm really going hard with the organic builds and the fungi in this world. And this is just the latest in a long line of really, really, really cool builds that 
I think turned out very well. Taking a look at the inside here, you can see it's kind of a disaster. I haven't cleaned up any of my scaffolding on the inside. You can see all the dirt that I had to place, you know, the temporary blocks and whatever. But we can just make our way up here. Uh, eventually, oh, hello there. <laughs> eventually, when this becomes our storage system, of course, we'll have a water elevator to make this a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, coming up to the top here and taking a look around, you can see the sheer amount of space we have in the top here. It's honestly kind of ridiculous, just the amount of square footage we've got here. It's way bigger than our other mushroom, which I will in fact be using for enchanting. I'm blanking on the name right now, but I will put it on screen right now. Thank you very much for the suggestion. I will definitely be moving my enchanting setup over to the smaller shroom we made last episode. I absolutely love how it is towering over the rest of our starter area thus far, really overshadowing quite literally the rest of it. I mean, honestly, this ooh sirens next to my apartment very cool living in a city's cool but uh not always cool guys sometimes uh things get a little bit noisy out there i actually put feather falling on my boots specifically for this project because i was falling off of the stupid scaffolding and off the shroom a lot and with this mega mushroom completed i think we are just about done with video time for today but before you leave before you click off the video i've been thinking you know, this world's been getting easier and easier. I got full diamond armor, I've got good enchanted tools, I don't have really villager access right now, but you know, that potentially might change. I've been able to make these big projects like without fearing for my life constantly, and uh, kinda wanna change that. So, in the beginning of the next episode, I'm thinking about adding a little something something to uh, spice up the difficulty, so be sure to stick around for that. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Well, not for me, I'm actually gonna have an even more miserable existence, but it's gonna be fun for you guys, and that's what matters. Uh, anyways, until next time, my dudes, this has been Leon, and I will see you all in the next random hardcore video. Stay shroomy.